Greetings, nerds. This is Santa Nerd. I'm your host, Sarah Belmont. And with me, as always, is our Mr. Producer, Will Paul. How are you doing tonight, Will? Doing very well, sir. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing good. That's good. That's good. The only bit of news that we have to discuss tonight is just the Joker trailer that we both watched. So what did you think about this trailer? So I felt like it was an extension of the first film. Quite honestly, as far I mean, I, I really enjoyed it, and I will I will say that I've only watched Joker one time. <laughs> I yeah. watched it in the theater, and I was like, that was an experience, and I really enjoyed that experience, and I don't need to experience it again. Not because it was bad; it was just like I I just I just wanted to just bask in how fantastic the film that was. Um. But watching the trailer, I, I I I liked it. I you know it, the cinematography was wonderful. The the fact that it's a musical, you know, doesn't seem there's going to be an original song. So it looks like it's going to be a lot of covers. But um, you know we we got that element, you know, and of course the big similar beats that we had from the first film, with, with whether or not all this is going on in Arthur's head, or you know, combination of in his head and in the real world, um, you know, those, all those things that were at play, but you know, the, the title really, you know, you know, Joker, fully I do, I mean, madness for two, you know, rough translation. Um, it, it was all there. Right. Right. Yeah. I've seen, I've seen the Joker movie twice. Okay. Um, uh, for some reason I ended up watching it with my parents. Okay. I saw it in theaters but it's also a movie I I it's not even like to bask in the glory or or whatever you just said about about having watched it one time it's more it's just a really hard like it's not it's not a happy movie it's not a it's a well-crafted movie but at the same time it's not a story it's like oh let me go and rewatch that (laughs) No. Yeah, as well as the best, yeah, just like it was an experience, and I saw it. I enjoyed. I thought it was a well put together film, but you're yeah. right. And it's, I, it's not a story you want to return to again and again. For for, but at the same time, watching the trailer, first of all, it's just a really good trailer because it. You don't he- really hear. You see a lot. You don't hear a lot, and you just. It's just like, yeah, okay, we're we're back here. We're not gonna get told that same story, but it's a continuation, and yeah. it's and it's gonna be. They're key. They seem to have kept a lot of the elements, the cinematography, of course, same director. Like, mm-hmm. like it's. I think it's gonna be probably on par, mm-hmm. um, but but we'll see. So. So I'm looking forward to it. I'm not looking forward to any more trailers. <laughs> this was more <laughs> than enough. Yeah, yeah. Um, but at the same time, having knowing what I thought about the first one, I'm also kind of like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to it, but I'm also just like, I, I don't. Like it's it's a very different eagerness than when like there's something that I have rewatched a few times and it's like okay I can't wait for the sequel so yeah yeah it's sort of like yeah I hear you I hear you yeah I mean it's it's a it's a film that I'm anticipating but the anticipation is different as far as in the comic book genre than say something like you know Deadpool which is coming out this summer um, so well, that's a good comparison because we've talked about our experiences with Deadpool and they're about on par with Joker where yeah. Where both Deadpool one and two, like I remember having a blast, but for some reason I've never rewatched Deadpool two. Mm-hmm. Um, however, I am looking forward to the third one, but I'm also I'm looking forward just because I know I'm gonna have an awesome time. Yeah. When when with the Joker two, I'm just like, I don't know if I'm gonna have an awesome time, but I think it's gonna be a well well put together movie. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh no I yeah. it's so different <laughs> yep yep oh, for sure God. for sure yeah yeah, yeah. but uh, yeah but lady gaga as far as her her take on uh harley quinn and uh you know it seems like 
wh- whether or not she is also a patient or w- was a psychiatrist and then became became a patient in Arkham. I mean, you know how they meet and all that kind of stuff. I mean, I'm really interested in seeing how that all goes. And then also just the fact that she also is like Joaquin doing method acting um, and, and, and also uh, seeing her uh, portray this character and just, you know, like you said, it's just an extension of, of what we, what we saw with Arthur in, in the first film and, and um yeah, and, and, and just sort of the consequences of what we saw at the very end of that film. I mean, that uh, end of the first film, which, you know, Gotham is going nuts and all, all the things that are happening there. I mean, that's the thing about that movie. I mean, it, it did leave an impression that even to this day, I still remember, like, all the things that happened in it, even though I've only watched it once. <laughs> so but, yeah. my yeah. theory is kind of based on the very last scene in the trailer. Mm-hmm. Is there, She's talking to him through the 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 guarded windows like like a a, somebody who's visiting an inmate would do right right um and i wonder if this whole thing is actually told through her eyes Mm. and and she maybe was like during at the time of the first movie occurred was a nurse or whatever a psychiatrist in arkham but then because of what happened um and why he's now locked up in arkham she like he's glorified to an extent and so she becomes one of those obsessed people who like yeah you know how there's there's those people who end up like the fame of being a criminal will suddenly oh i want to have your baby i'm going to write you letters and we're going to get married while you're still inside like she does that and then i wonder if she does something else on the outside that makes her end up on the inside like and and the delusion is this love that Mm -hmm. she has for him so yeah I think that, you know, that's a very good theory. And especially given the scene where, you know, she does uh, trigger warning, you know, she does put the, you know, she imitates his action with, you know, putting a, I can't remember the exact wording that she says in the, in the, in the trailer, but, you know, um, with the suicide look, um, you know, putting a gun to his head and stuff. So, um, yeah, yeah and, and to, 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 to your point about, him influencing her um and, and and i guess that would be consistent with their 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 madness of love as far as joker and harley quinn anyway so yeah right right so well we'll we'll see but again like see this is what like it can be a good trailer but i'm like when we talk about these things my head starts spinning and then if i go into that movie and i'm <laughs> <laughs> but again, six wants to forget all about this conversation completely. So exactly, exactly, yeah, exactly. Um, and that will come out in October. So yep. October four. All right, all right. That brings us to Shogun episode eight, the Abyss of Life. Torinaga's defeated clan moves to Edo. Blackthorn must decide who he fights for. Will, what are your overall thoughts about this episode? Overall thoughts about this episode. It was one where I, this was, I haven't had an re- emotional reaction to an episode like I did watching this one with Hiramatsu, his actions, um, with uh, Kerry when he did the seppuku. And um, yeah, this is probably like Last of Us or, 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 or maybe Oppenheimer as far as this, like, where I was just like, damn, uh, I really did like just fall out of my chair from, from the incident there. But, but also uh, it was, this episode was really good. We, you know, we've, we talked a lot last week about Blackthorn and Mariko and whether or not things were getting stagnant uh, there with their, their story. We did get more of, of some things moving progressed with with him and seeing how things are you know with blackthorn in japan really you know and, and sort of he gets what he wants as far as finally getting an encounter his men so there's good you know we got progression there and um yeah i just really thought that um this was a probably my i will just say probably my favorite episode to date uh, of the series 
Hmm. Very good. Um, this this episode should have been called loyalty. So yeah, just yeah. gonna like. Yeah, I agree. Come on, I don't I don't know what the abyss of life. I get it. You you start with a death, you end with a death. Okay. Um, <laughs> Um, so, so because you've already brought it up, we can jump to that last scene. Yeah. Um, so, so you fell out of your chair. Well, it's so, <laughs> and the reason why I say that is I, I've, I always thought that he was, I had a feeling that he was going to die, uh -huh. but I thought it would be in a situation where either when he got, you know, dispatched to Osaka or, um, in, in the battle at the end. But how it all came about, and I love the way that they had set this whole thing up with, with his death about whether or not he was in on Tornaga's plans. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, we did find out that he, he wasn't on the plan, but I think Tornaga, he... Tornaga was anticipating to go one way, but um, Hiramatsu took it in a different way to to still help shake Tornaga out of his, you know, to basically you know show how how convinced and how loyal he is to his feudal lord, and 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 so I I just really thought that the way that all sort of just went down was just very effective and it was one of those characters I just really even though we haven't talked much about him here on the podcast just watching the show has been one that I've really enjoyed throughout the series so so wait so yeah. you're saying that he wasn't on the plan to make it look like Toronaga has been defeated yeah. but he wasn't in on the plan that to like really drive that point home you're going to kill yourself i think he, so i think he basically took the place because with the way that things set up everybody was defeated but then the you know we had the three generals that when they were going to uh Tornaga's son's funeral they were they, you know, they were in their armor and then of course whenever the council does get together of of the vassals get together there at the end, of course, they were all in protest of Tornaga wanting to surrender. And so I think Tornaga, I think his plan was, you know, for them, for the three of them to like commit seppuku. But, you know, and of course, Ward would get back to uh, Ishido and Lady Ochiba and Onosaka to like, you know, yeah, he, he's really defeated. He's really done. He, he really is going to come here accept the impeachment etc but i think hiramatsu was like no for this to really 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 work it was a game you know i've got to i've got to make the ultimate sacrifice for my oh, best friend okay so here. yeah so so no he he wasn't in on that like that wasn't part of Torinaga's plan hiramatsu right. called an audible and was yeah. like no i need to do this yeah. um okay all right yeah that's that's fair i mean i honestly when you explain it like that yeah i i that would that would make somewhat more sense i still don't know where that leaves me with Torinaga, just because he still allowed it to happen, even though it wasn't part of his plan. So, like, on one hand, you can be like, yeah, Tornaga, great stra strategist here, like, clearly has everything under control. And then on, uh, but then when, if, if, if he was not a part of the plan, then it's just like, no, that just happened because his, his right-hand man, like, called an audible and actually got the job done. <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah. so it's it's still just like like I I can I really I really enjoy this episode. It definitely is up there in terms like one of the better episodes of the show so far. Um I I get I I I question if it's my favorite just because of the the Lady Ochiba episode. Um mm. two episodes back was really done well. 
I just, it's just like this whole, so I, I was not emotionally like taken aback by what happened. Um, just because at the end of the day, I know Toronaga is going to win. So mm. I'm watching the episode just being like, all right. All right, I really like this episode, though, in comparison to last week, because it actually felt like people were doing things other than mm-hmm. just dating around. Mm-hmm. Um, choices were being, loyalties were being tested. Uh, choices were being made. Yabushige and Blackthorn had scenes together. And, like, like not just, like, we're going to, I'm going to teach you how to fight on the beach. No, 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 no. Actual scenes, calling each other shit faces, but loyal shit faces. Like, come on. This is what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. Um, but in terms of that, that final scene, it didn't, like, I don't know. It makes me question how, it makes me question like if I still like Toronaga or if I've mm. kind of lost respect for him as a character because I'm like, dude, you you just you just keep fucking up here, but okay. Well, yeah. But but at the same time I, I get it, but but to your point, like he that wasn't even part of his plan. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So- I think yeah, I think it was part of the plan, and I think Hiramatsu was a part of it. But, you know, I don't think, for example, Toronaga didn't anticipate Naga- his son, Naga- Nagagato, to, like, go off and try to kill his, his half-brother, you know? Oh, no, and, no that, and, was, and, that was definitely not part of his plan, but he, in the long run, it afforded him, to- his, it, him time. It so. gave him time, yeah. And even the elders, when they, even all the vassals, when they were sitting around talking about him, her Toronaga son, it was like, yeah, you know, on the one hand, yeah, you know, they, they, they were like, you know, like, for example, Yabashuge was just like, on the, when they were on the beginning of the, of the episode, when they're like on the march to, to Ida, they, he was like, you know, you know, this is the guy, you know, it would have been better off for him, you know, he slipped, he dies on a rock instead of, you know, he'd been better off just getting boiled to death in my, in my pit, you know? <laughs> so, so his recklessness was, you know, bought Tornaga some time. And I think, you know, Tornaga again was, you know, wanting to you, as I mentioned before, I think he, you know, his, his plan was to go one way. And I think, you know, it, it was, it was so convincing to just about everyone except for Lady Jen and Hiramatsu. Um, and then of course uh Marco figured it out, you know, after the after the whenever she and Tornaga were talking there at the end. But uh but to everyone else, I mean Blackthorn, uh you know, all the other vassals, I mean, they were all they were all bought they all bought into the ruse that what Tornaga had given up. Right, right. So are you saying that the ruse started last week? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He he definitely did not do as good of a job last week as he did this week. Because last week it didn't feel like he was he was defeated. It felt like he legitly legitimately did not know what to do. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, well, I think that was part of the ruse. He did not know what to do. <laughs> yeah, I think that, that I think that was part of the ruse, and and it, this was carried but forward. I don't, I don't see. I don't know if that was a part of the ruse because him not knowing what to do wasn't buying him time. Mm. True. Like, like he, he. So, so I, I see. That's where I question yeah. you calling that a part of the ruse because it to me is no, no, no. He legitimately yeah. did not know what to do. Then he got afforded um, because his one of his sons, not his only son, um, manages to get himself killed. And then, well, the grief period. And then and then I think during that process, he realizes, okay, well, I got to I got to play dumb. I got to play dead essentially here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And see where that gets me. Um, Yeah. Yeah, I think it helped. I mean, I think I think the the ruse. I think the plan was was um, was started then, but especially when you think about last week's episode with the plans. You know, he he. Whenever he and Lady Jen were talking, 
about remember she the stick of time when she was yeah i know what advocating you mean. advocating yeah. for thinking with with things in Edo for her to, right. her world the plan was there but i think it just really whenever you whenever you look at it in its totality with the events of this week i don't know if it wasn't so much that he wasn't didn't know what he was doing. It's just it it it, it because I think Lady Jen figures it out then. Well, this just no, this just this just con- this just confirms what that that this that this was his long term plan. But then so, there were some ball cards that happened that he didn't anticipate. Okay. Okay. If if Lady Jen, if we're saying that just because Lady Jen says I know you have a plan, that mm-hmm. that means that she's figured out the plan. <laughs> I don't technically think it does. Then that means for a majority of this episode, everybody else has figured out the plan too. Nope, because nope. only until the end, when people start questioning, is like, no, are you really like, we're really like, this is the plan to actually surrender? Because everyone, like, Blackthorn's the only one who's like, what are you guys doing? Yeah, I think. Like, the what? fact that his other generals were in protest, I mean, wearing the armor and stuff, that was that that was an act of defiance because they were they really thought that he that he was defeated. Okay. So I mean, so I think I, I think I just still yeah. Anyway, well, okay. I, I I'm I'm not going to continue on my point, but no, go, so no, go ahead. No, what, go, what if, plan did Mar- merit? I'm still questioning. Like, I'm not going to get into semantics about. Who knew about the plan? What was the plan? Because honestly, I don't even really understand the plan. Like the plan this episode was to play dead. I totally understand that plan. But right. when we're saying plan, that's such a general word. Like yeah. what? what is the plan here? Like I you mean, have time, you play dead, and then what? Like, and at the end, I have no idea when Mariko was brought into the fold or sh- what she figured out, because all I know is that there's that that conversation at the end. It's like, well, now you do your part or are you ready to do your part? And she says, yes, she is. So there's been conversations that we're not witness to. No, so, I think, no, I think once I think once she, he after he after what happens with Hiramatsu. And she sees how he reacted to it. And that's, you know, just, I think it was one of those subtext things that she was reading between the lines that, oh, I see where he's coming from now. Prior to that, she was also like, I think she, I mean, it was the the whole, it it goes, the fact that here, you know, that he doesn't, he's not actually surrendering, that he is using this Biden his time to, to, amass his forces so he can that they can they can do the crimson sky right and you know so here matsu you know nagagato's death was just a uh, uh, unfortunate happy accident right, as far right. as well know, yeah, yeah we then, know yeah and then so he, and then and, and and when tornaga's in the in the courtyard there it's like you know i've get, i've got this chance now um, I'm not going to, hopefully he's not going to, he's thinking I'm not going to squander this because I've lost two, two key people in my life and they, they bought me time. Uh, what did you think about the tea scene? Yeah, the tea scene was one that I'm glad they finally got some resolution to their situation <laughs> i don't know if it's resolution or just acknowledgement but it just like it just hammers on the point why uh butaro is just he's just trash <laughs> i guess you know he's like why is he trash well because all this time he was just like i'm not gonna you know he's like i'm not gonna let you die and then now all of a sudden because he again going back to the point about whether or not you know who's all on the plan or not really believing that tornaga's given up he's like okay let's com- both commit suicide and we you know so that we don't like well they go out on through. their own terms yeah, yeah. As, as man and yeah. wife so as man so and I, wife i guess i don't understand why that would make him trash though because all this time she you know because she didn't allow her to have the honorable death that she should have gotten with the rest of her family yeah yeah that's fair yeah but i so, mean 
So, so I mean, I, so I mean, I just think he's he's he, you know he's he, he's just jerking her around again, just mm-hmm. as far as their relationship, as far as his power, you know, abusing his 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 role in their relationship again. Okay. So here are my thoughts about Bentaro, and yeah. I know it's um, it's very opposite of you. Mm-hmm. Um, and probably a lot of other viewers. I just, for some reason, I just feel like, I just feel as though for as good as the writing is on the show, they are not doing a good job with the ensemble. Because mm-hmm. I think that we are shown only s- certain things from Bentaro, but they don't add up. <laughs> And it doesn't, like, this whole dynamic, and so this scene itself, it's like, yeah, good on Mariko. She she chooses to live, and she says F you to her husband, who mm-hmm. we've seen do some abusive stuff. I still don't agree that it was abuse for him to, like, deny, like, to say, no, you need to live, because he clearly loves her. To some extent, like abuse or no abuse, he even says at the beginning of the scene, like I remember when we first got married because there was a period of time before anything happened with her father where they were together and Mm -hmm. they were creating this family and there were feelings. Now, she has changed and he, I think, still holds on to that. Mm -hmm. Um, And I still don't really... It's still not clear to me exactly what his intent was for not allowing her the honorable death. Unless it's just like, that's my wife. I'm in love with her. How can I allow her to die? Like, Mm -hmm. why would I do such a thing? Mm -hmm. Um, But even though it brings shame to him, like we we talked about this at length, like a few weeks ago. So, so I just. I and 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 where I'm coming about the writers and everything, it's just like we honestly don't know how abusive he has been because we've seen one scene of it. And yeah. I'm not excusing behavior, but I do want to want to like add in some context. He was a really drunk. Yeah. And that's why he tells Blackthorn in that at the end of that scene, like the sake. Mm-hmm. Like that got to him and he realized his wife was sleeping around on him. Granted, she thought he was dead, but still, still, <laughs> yeah. she did start an affair. And also, like, he's been in the village for and observing them. Like, it's it's not just sex. It's an emotional affair. So right. he, like, had other aggressions going on then. Mm-hmm. So I just. I feel like we are supposed to believe that he's a true villain because he's the person who's preventing Mariko and Blackthorn to be together, but they are not doing enough in terms of consistency because a, he's the one who's always like told her, no, you have to live. And then even in this moment, he's just like, I'm going to make tea for you. Like, we're still together like like i want to make this work but at the same time i understand why mariko says what she says even though that's a little bit inconsistent for me because i'm like girl you've been begging for death for years and you're not going to take it like what but anyway so that's just my hot take on that dynamic um but but yeah, we we shall see. I mean, Mariko's now on a boat with Blackthorn and Yabashuge, and I have no idea where Bentaro is. So, so yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. what else happened? Well, yeah, well, Blackthorn finally got to he finally got his wish, and he was reunited with his crew. Um, and I thought, and I really liked the way that scene sort of played out, especially. In the context of earlier in the episode when Father um, uh, Miller, I can't remember, yeah, the was back, and of course he, 
and you know he was Tor- Blackthorn was released from his obligation as a Tornaga, but uh but then it, you know there was that very cutting remark uh from from the father about uh, oh so you, you know whenever you read out with your folks are you going to be wearing your wearing your clothes where you're going to be wearing that outfit and and then when he finally does see his folks in the in the neighborhood there and to see it you know it was that real to me when i was watching that scene it was that realization that blackthorn had that he he really he has you know, we've seen him, you know, we, and they've shown this. He's, you know, he's gotten better about learning the, some Japanese phrases, and he's, you know, he's wearing, he's wearing traditional clothes, and just his whole matter, you know, he's figuring out like how to navigate this country. And then, you know, you see these his former crewmates, and they're basically acting like the drunken barbarian that that the Japanese initially thought Blackthorn was, not made a sort of drunken, but just a, you know, lower lower coof individual and it, it just really showed the in his reaction to uh to his former crewmate um really just to me showed the the, the, the how blackthorn has changed in, in his time um there in japan so i thought that i really liked the way that whole scene sort of just played itself out and especially um you know, even down to like the the, the whole cleanliness thing that um, that thought about earlier in the episode versus like you know, how clean Blackthorn is now compared to the other Europeans. It was just like really well done, I thought. Yeah, I, I think that was that was a good scene, too, just because in terms of he has been so desperate to um, get his. Uh, his crew because he feels responsible for them. And then when he encounters them, there's a resentment there and a divide there. And it's not the same crew that he left in a way. They're not the same and he's not the same. And because they've had different experiences. And I think that that scene could have played out so many different ways um, going into it, I was like, oh, okay, so I, I bet this is going to happen in that moment and this, um, and it, and it didn't go exactly the way I expected, um, Mm -hmm. just because it was, I wasn't, I wasn't surprised that the men like were mad (laughs) (laughs) and it's just, it's just, I, and I don't even know if it's a result of how submersion, um, how much being, um, being in the position that he is in Japan, that Blackthorn has changed, but it was, it was just a good reality check. Um, Because I think that there's still something about him. Like, I like that line about how I, I don't belong to England. I don't belong here. Like, mm-hmm. I'm kind of like a nomad at this point. So, yeah, yeah I like which, that too. He, he really is. Like, there's, there's yeah. something which then that just rings true to what his crew member said. Like, you yeah. did this for yourself. So, it's kind of like, loyalty has is blackthorn ever been loyal to anyone like yeah. if 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 that's true like this was a result of his actions for his own greed so yeah yeah, yeah. that's that's a very good point and to your point why this literature should have been titled loyalty because there were so many loyalty tests <laughs> and this displays of loyal or disloyal behavior among all these characters this episode um and and you know and, and thinking and it, and it really gets to like uh the, the other pairing that you mentioned earlier as far as blackthorn and yabashige and and the you know the the buddy show this the spinoff that we need <laughs> with these two characters because we get you know Yabush, you know blackthorn um like since he was cut loose from tornaga he was like okay i'll cast my flag on to yabashige now and yabashige is sort of like hmm okay um yeah, you, know, you, know, you know, okay, shit face. We'll 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 s- s- figure out what we're gonna do here. And well, and no, all, he but, just denies him. And he denies him. Yeah, yeah, he denies him. 
but but also i think you know it goes back all the way back to the very first episode as far as their pairing and how they're kind of mirror images of each other because they're they're both like gaming gaming the system or game gaming gaming the events to to try to achieve their ends um yeah and so maybe that maybe that's why at the end of the day they you know even they're sort of kindred spirits in that regard but also just the bonding that they had on that cliff when 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 blackthorn saved the um you know maybe there's this kind of weird like feeling of, of indebtedness or something that, no, that no, that's really, he, he says it in this episode what it was he says i saw that you were a man who's yeah. willing to control his own fate yeah um and then my argument is no 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 I remember that scene very, very well because it's my favorite scene in the first episode. And you did not understand why Yabushige was going to kill himself rather than let the sea take him. Rodriguez had to explain it to you. So let's not forget. (laughs) (laughs) Rodriguez had to do some explaining. And then you were like, oh, I understand now about why he did that. I would do something like that too. And then he... Kept it in the back of his mind to use in that moment, and and it was it was good. Like it it makes sense. I don't know if they're yeah. gaming the system. It's more that these two people don't they want to control fate. They don't want yeah. to blindly follow someone and not have any control over whether like yeah. I'm gonna live or die. Like yeah. no, I yeah. want some control here. So yeah. loyalty be damned. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they they are they're really good together. So I'm glad that we're gonna probably have more scenes of them together moving mm-hmm. forward. Um, anything else you want to talk about that happened in this episode? Um, I mean, I, I know I brought up Lady Jen and and the father, and I just thought it was uh, I thought it was just fun, funny of uh, Toronaga as far as planning his you know, future Edo that he both willed them land next to each other so the the the, the brothel and the church have to work together <laughs> their next door neighbor yeah. Uh, yeah i thought that was just a funny funny moment whenever uh i did laugh out loud whenever whenever that scene happened um but yeah and then of course i guess uh you know back in osaka we have um the co- you know, the consolidation of power there with um shido and, and lady ochiba um you know where he's trying to you know where he wants to marry her and so um yeah so it's, it's, all these things are just really like i said i think to your point uh, you know where last week's episode you know could be argued didn't move so many things forward i think this one definitely moved a lot of the pieces forward to the so for the penultimate episode next week um do you think we're getting a second season no, I don't. I don't think so. I think everything's going to get wrapped up. Good, good, because I know that there's been some questions about that. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, as my understanding is, this is a one-off. This is a limited series, and everything gets wrapped up. Yep. All right. Well, that brings us to Three Body Problem, Episode Five, Judgment Day. As threat level rises, rise a secret mission to retrieve enemy intel ventures into dangerous territory an ominous message reaches earth <laughs> um all right so so panama this episode judgment day slash what happened in panama that's what we shall call this episode yeah, yeah. um those damn microfibers <laughs> I literally was like, "Holy fuck, that's what, what they were doing!" Because this whole episode, you're 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 watching Raj and and Augie in pa- Panama working for Wade on a project, and you know she does nanofibers, but for some reason, I was not like, I didn't I didn't understand. <laughs> I was mm-hmm. like, "What is she building?" And then and then they just it was it was straight out of a horror movie. I I did scream mainly because there were parts where you're like there no there are kids they're they are showing us kids I don't want to see a kid like literally split into a million little pieces here no 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 and then they cut away and they only showed us adults right (laughs) 
and, 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 and the kid's foot. But, you know, I think that well, Augie well, saw yeah, later. Yeah, yeah. The, the aftermath of a shoe of a foot. But every, yeah. but you don't actually see the kid, yeah. which, thank God, I did yeah. not need to see that. Um, but but it, yeah. was, it was a very well done sequence. It went on yeah. a little bit too long. A little bit yeah. too long. Um, but, but you definitely got the horror element of what happened, which, which is good. That's what yeah. they wanted considering, um, Augie's distraughtness yeah. since Panama. Um, but majority of this episode is about the lead up and the execution of that whole sequence. So what was going through your mind during that? Same. I mean, whenever I realized, because I, I I was like you, I was like, okay, what's what's okay? You're getting her work on again, and what's the purpose of these? Not you know, because you know we talked about this even last week, and as far as why the scientists were all committing suicide and 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 everything, and and what's the ultimate goal that the Santi were trying to do here um or, or evans and and, and 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 evans as well as his, as their em, their emissary but uh yeah i mean i mean you I, you said you said it all i mean whenever it, it happened i was like holy fuck i was like wow uh yeah i just i it was hard to watch especially with yeah. the little kids at the beginning uh, it was, it was, and and it was a dramatic effect, and it was very effective. I mean, but I think to this point of the series, because I was when I started with this episode at first, I was kind of I will say I was it was good and things were picking up, but I was kind of like, where are we going here? Why would we call it? Yeah. And then that happened, and then it just everything from that was just like whoa. So. Yeah, see, I think I I got a bit more of that in the next episode, if I'm going to be honest. Yeah. Um, but but this episode, I was I was surprised because we we start off with the aftermath of the raid and when Jay in present day being caught mm-hmm. and, and um, by Wade and and held for questioning, even though she legally hasn't done anything. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's all is very questionable. Yeah. Um, but you, so you start to see some of the interrogations that occurs, and um, Clarence, who's who does the interrogation, and and Clarence asks the questions that we're all asking. It's like, okay, we we all know Evans, Red, Little Red Riding Hood. And the Santi want nothing to do with us anymore because we're liars, okay? Right. And and so and then the raid happens. They so so why did they let that happen? And then and then this happens after um after Augie like restarts her projects and there is no con- countdown clock. Like the Santi are clearly no longer protecting anyone like yeah. they're not here for protecting anyone because again we're all liars and we're all blugs as as the message reads at the end of this episode yeah. so so it's it's very much that that like that loss of trust um but wenji is still persistent like it's it's wenji is in this weird situation where i'm like i don't know what your play is at this point like and, yeah, well, and get into it later toward yeah. I think it happens in episode six, but yeah. um, but yeah, because because they they do judgment, they they uh destroy judgment day to get intel mm-hmm. uh, of all of Evan's recordings that of the conversations he's had with the Santi, right. and then Wade gives like let's let's when jay listen in on on those mm-hmm. like the highlights which includes the moment where he inadvertently like made them lose all faith in us yeah so yeah yeah this was like 
yeah i mean i know this you're right i mean this this episode really got into the you know the gathering of the intelligence um and really as far as her play i mean what you know one of the things that you know we we wondered about before was what was whether or not evans was indeed vera's father and we did get confirmation that that yeah. he, that, he, that he was at least a biological father and that's about that was about the extent of it <laughs> um still but, does not make any sense to me but okay <laughs> well i mean i guess and i and i guess we we learn later well in episode six about about uh vera learning about um their about who are i assume she learns that he's that evans is her father at that point i I don't know but but at least we know that 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 vera does discover their correspondence with one another evans and and winjay so um but um yeah i mean the, the other thing that this episode like i said i felt I guess it was a good Augie episode in the sense that we we, we finally get to, she's finally getting to do some stuff as far as more than just like seeing this countdown clock, uh, how she fits into the overall bigger yeah bigger plot to you know get to Santi, um, and then the um, you know the other thing I thought that stood out was. Um, I don't know if it stood out, but it was just like, you know, we, we you know, it set up, it, it's starting to give Will more things to do other than just pining away for um, Jen. <laughs> uh, okay. but, because, you. you know, Jack leaves his estate to Will and, uh, you know, that, so that gives that, you know, as we, as the story unfolds and, and the subsequent episode, um, you know, we we see him utilize, utilizing some of those resources for for the plan that they come up with. So, um, and then of course the bigger thing is you know Wade and and Jen putting on the putting on the um, headsets and and learning more about the uh, about the pro, you know the AI that they sent um, and and also really get into the core about why. Asante wanted to, um, you know, basically they're killing all these scientists to like, because Earth, you know, it took the Asante millions of years to get to the development, whereas Earth, you know, Earthlings were able to do all these scientific advancements faster than the Asante. So ultimately, Asante was like, oh, I, you know, they're all go- y'all are going to overtake us, so we're going to like do what we need to do to make sure we stay on, you know, that that we remain in control here. So. But we can squat, squash you bugs before you squash us. <laughs> right, which I think we kind of already knew, though. Like, the the whole, even though there, there it wasn't so much a question of why for me. It was more of, like, how. Mm-hmm. Like, how is this happening? And then they explain it with the proton. And, and that's something that we kind of exchanged a brief conversation about this weekend, where it's, like, the good thing about the show is, you get you get a lot of questions yeah. and it's so nice to have them all immediately answered yeah and then and then new questions come up or or additional follow-up questions if you will come up mm-hmm. um especially with with how we're pairing this this show with the in blocks of two um yeah. this show might drive me crazy if we were watching one episode at a time not gonna lie yeah um, it would <laughs> be very drawn out I- yeah, this is yeah. I think the two the two page is 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 too much to binge, but it's but you're right. The weekly would be kind of just a solo per week would also be kind of tough. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I mean it's tough to talk about episode five without talking about episode six. So I'm just gonna yeah. do a brief synopsis of the stars of our destination, yeah. with the world in a state of panic following a mo- mo- mom momentous momentous declaration way gathers the world's greatest minds to prepare a defense plan so so yeah we we have i still don't think will's doing a whole lot he made a donation but he's still yeah. just pining after gin and yeah. i still have no idea what saul is doing he's really not like this the Oxford Five has come down to the Oxford Two. It's Augie and it's Jin. Like they're the only real players at like here right now. 
Yeah. Um, which these two episodes, because of what happens in Panama, Augie is clearly against like helping Wade prevent like like to to allow our technology to advance so that we are prepared when the Santi arrive 400 years from now. And and Jin is more on board. And by the end of it, Saul kind of convinces her, Saul and Will can convince her to actually like go and help. So so Will yeah. and Saul are emotional support. So yeah. they're emotional yeah. support characters. Yeah. But um yeah, it's just so oh well, well we're gonna talk about episode six, of course, but I do want to say one thing that I've been thinking about in terms of both this show and Shogun, and just the yeah. fact that we're watching these two shows simultaneously. Both of them are both based off of books. Both of them are very it's large scale storytelling. Granted, both of them are in different genres. And I think they have arguably, ar argument wise, yeah. they have different problems and they're like mirror images of one another where, hmm. where three body, one problem, very, it's a sci-fi show, very conceptual. The characters though are flat. The characters hmm. are, there's not a lot of depth. There's yeah. not because you can't do that type of like any one of these characters could die. And I'd be like, OK, I'm moving on. Granted, yeah. I'm like that about a lot of characters, but still, come on, hear me out. Yeah, no, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm there yeah. with you on that one. Yeah. yeah, it's just but why it's still a a very watchable show, a very enjoyable show is because the concept, the mm -hmm. ideas, the bigger storyline here. And the mystery of it all. Flip it over to Shogun. I find characters very deep. Mm -hmm. It's a very character driven story. We have a lot of them. And at, so at times some of them are more shallow than others. But at the end of the day, you're watching Shogun because of these characters and because of the internal conflicts and the politics and all of that. I don't think you're necessarily watching Shogun because of the elaborate story that is like Toronaga rising above and getting becoming Shogun status. Like, like yeah. it's 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 very it's a very general story that we've seen a thousand times play out. It's just the fact that the the characters themselves are very compelling and the mm -hmm. internal conflicts are very compelling. It's like the the reverse of yeah. what. It, we're seeing so I like it's yeah. taken me a while but I'm like okay now I get why we have like this weird this this nice balance between these two shows because both of them are good for very different reasons or for opposite reasons yeah. like their strengths and their weaknesses are opposite of one another I, I could not agree yeah uh, more I mean you, you're spot on with that I, I can't add anything more to that uh, that's I completely agree. Yeah. And that's it for us. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 but you're right. I mean, I, I was thinking about that today too, with just with as as I was putting together my notes for tonight. And the only thing I will add is just like you know, to to your point about they're both off of books. Um, some of the creative decisions that in the adaptation of these stories, I think took very good stories and the, the choices that they've made as far as where they diverge from the source material in many ways has enhanced enhanced the story that um you know which which, which a good adaptation should do i mean it should be honored it should be faithful to the source material but but you know sometimes things translate don't tra necessarily translate one to one from book to live action. So you need to make some dramatic changes to make it work. And I think uh, I haven't read either one of these books, but, um, but from, you know, just hearing other people talk about them on other, you know, podcasts or reading reviews about them. I mean, it, that, 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 that definitely is something that I've seen come through. Right. Right. Yeah. It's their adaptations. It's not one for one. And yeah. And so, so choices definitely have to be made. Um, 
So the stars of our destination. So we're going to space. Yep. Um, that has been decided. We're going to send a person. Is it going to be Raj? Are they going to send Raj to space, or do you think they're going to send Jen to space? Um. Well, Raj like, is definitely getting sent to the moon <laughs> to lead yeah. up the effort. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that that's a, that's a fair. Do, do you think Jin and Augie are also going to be sent to the moon, or is it just going to be Raj? I think the team will go to the moon. Okay. We're going to space. Yeah, we're going to space now. <laughs> who's going to be on the? <laughs> yeah. Who's going to be on the little starship that gets sent um to the Santi to be our? You know, our mole or whatever you want to call her emissary. That, uh, yeah, who knows? It could be, it could be a character that these that has yet to be introduced for all I know. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be Clarence. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. It's gonna be, it's gonna be Saul. It's gonna be, yeah. We're gonna finally make use of Saul. <laughs> finally, yeah, be, I mean, yeah. he is the one connected to Vera, just because he's the person who last saw her before she she died. Yeah. Um, and so back, rewind a bit to back when we were saying like this last week, we had a lot of discussions about, about Vera mm -hmm. and her parents and we got the answers. Her, her dad biologically is Evans. Yeah. I still don't, why I said my comment earlier about like, I don't understand it. I, I understand that he's the father, the father, like, mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't understand, like, A, him having never met her before, yet Wenji and him still in constant communications because they're both tied to the Santi. Yeah. So, so and, and I get it, okay, they're not together together, but, like, so you just had sex that one time and, like, you never, like, like he never saw you pregnant. Like, is that where you're trying to get me to believe? And also, also, Wenji, 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 come on. Explain to me, why wasn't your kid on the boat? <laughs> I don't, I don't understand that. Like, like, and I don't, and then it was also clarified that, that Wenji did not give Jin Vera's game. Like, that was never right. Vera's game. And we were right about that. Which we makes sense. We were we were right. That was all a lie. And so Vera, Vera now she saw the correspondence, but what has not been confirmed is if she saw the countdown clock. Right. So she could still, and it's just because I still think it might have been the countdown clock with her, just because of the last thing she says to Saul, like, do you believe yeah. in God? And yeah. I don't know if correspondence about aliens between her mom and absentee father would, like, spark that so much as actually seeing things. Um, but, but yeah, I it, it is interesting how much Vera has a presence in this show yeah. mm -hmm. and we we barely see her but she's so connected to everyone <laughs> yeah yeah connected to everyone and plus all her work is so connected to again the overall mission of the santi to with the sofflin to like keep retard our scientific development because you know she was you know, because you know, she oversaw one of the super colliders and, and and you know she and Saul saw the wonky things that were happening with it. Um, but yeah, to your point about, I, I'm still not clear either. To be honest, um, I mean I have thoughts as far as why that why Wenji hid um, Vera from from Evans. You know, was it she? You know, but I, I, I but I just don't. It hasn't been. I haven't seen anything in the universe to like. Other to confer to like show what about Evans and his role in all of this with with Judgment Day and, and that when she didn't want him, want her want Vera to be a part of that. Yeah, yeah. We we're we had a lot and, of flashbacks with Wednesday yeah. and now. Yeah. Like between eighty seven and present day, it's like what happened. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but 
what happened <laughs> seriously yeah, <I'm> <laughs> yeah i mean there's a lot yeah and so listeners if you guys have any theories love to hear from you as far as like what do you think why she kept when she, what kept vera away from from evans goes you know as far as like why did vera have to die i mean to your you know as far as the um you know, I did have, I do have some thoughts about that, especially something that, that Winji said about the, you know, the whole thing with her, with the bugs and, and, um. So what, what do you, why do you think it is? Why did, when, why did Vera have to die? Um, so Winji notes that, you know, in this episode that, she, you know, she could, she began to see what the, the, um, Red Brigade in the, in the Cultural Revolution um you know she could start a, she could sort of identify with them um you know right and, and i think vera it is 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 a lot like her her father you know who was um you know who, who was doing these scientific things to you know advance you know to advance our technology and knowledge of science and stuff and the cult, you know, the, 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 you know, of course, whenever we first meet when she, whenever she was a kid seeing her father executed there on the, on the, on the, on the lawn, um, you know, now, you know, she, now when the, is the red army person who is like seeing the threat and it, especially now is I, the, well, I humanity. still don't, I still yeah. don't understand why why she has to have her own daughter die. Um, I I think. I mean, I, I totally guess I guess I, I guess I guess she sees Vera as like the the problem, like you know. I guess Vera, I guess the work that she's doing and stuff is going to keep the. So we'll we'll advance us to the point where the Santi won't be able to to help us, which 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 is right. you know which he wants. You know, at the end of the day, she sees the Santi as this benevolent race that's going to yeah, come yeah. here and save us. And yeah. Vera is the person who's doing all these great things with science with all these other scientists around the world. You know, learning this. You know, with, and and. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, so I think that that's the threat. That's the threat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it goes back to what we were saying before. The scientists are the threat, and that's why they have to die. Wenji should not have raised her to become a scientist. Yeah, (laughs) clearly, clearly. Uh, So I mean, I like I totally understand what you're saying, and like in this moment, yeah, Wenji, she probably tried to get her to be like, "Girl, you got to stop this," but it's like why didn't you raise your daughter to become like a teacher or something else? (laughs) Like, (laughs) like I, I don't know. So I, I still am not fully convinced that Vera had to die. I understand why she did, but, um, considering her whole own mother and absentee father were behind this whole thing, they could have arguably prevented it. But so it's just, I don't know. It's just it's just interesting. I mean, to think about like the decisions, her faith, and and yeah, I I understand what I understand up until the end when Wenji sends another call to her lord and saying that she still has a useful idea or two. Like, don't cast me aside. It's like. Mm-hmm. Like, girl, you're not even going to be alive by the time they get here. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> and, you're, and you don't have a legacy anymore because Vera's dead. So, and now, and now you got Jin involved and Jin made the different choice. And, mm-hmm. and, um, I don't know. I don't know. So, Wenjin's very interesting, but, yeah. but yeah, she, uh, yeah. She she she's not mother of the year. Um, no, no, for sure. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Maybe she knew how Judgment Day would have ended eventually, and that's why she didn't have Vera on the boat to begin with. So I don't know. I don't know. Um, anything else you want to say about this episode? Um, you know, we we you know we 
like I said earlier, we we tie it back will and jack i mean you know will gets the reason you know jack's part of his estate so of course he's got the pancreatic cancer and and uh you know has months to live i still you know i, I the only thing i can figure you know with with that storyline with will jack jen and raj um you know, it, it, and this, I guess this is trying to, like, with all these grand scheme things of intergalactic conquering and whatnot, I guess we're trying to, like, humanize it some to, like, you know, have this love triangle going on with these three characters, or at least attempt at love triangle. But Will's like, nah, you know, he told Augie and Saul, look, I, I just, let's let her be happy, is, you know, but, um, I, you know, I, I get where they're trying to go with it, but it just feels, again, it, I bring it up just because I feel like it feels kind of forced into the story and mm-hmm. not not very organic um, to all the things that are going on. Um, so I just wanted to bring that up. Yeah, yeah. Will's going to be on the um, small spaceship. Yeah. So... So I don't know where this show is going to end. I, I, I'm going to say... I'm going to say this now that this week we're watching the final two episodes um, to talk about next week. And um, I, I am doubt I, I have my reservations going into these final two episodes. I don't know if they're going to stick the landing for me. Yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very much questioning things. <laughs> yeah. I'm, pre- I'm, I'm prepared for uh, a, cro- uh, a cliffhanger. <laughs> Because I know, you know, we are, you know, this is this series is based off of three books, so uh, I think this is there's only this book one, and you know, so we got more story to tell. So I, I'm 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 anticipating a cliffhanger that's going to leave me like, you know, Netflix, you better not cancel this show. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Well, on that note, Will, why don't you tell our listeners where they can find you? Yes, you can find me on X, but but everybody still calls it Twitter at Will M Polk W I L L M P O L K. You can find me there too at S J Belmont S J B E L M O N T. Please follow our crew on Twitter at Scene and Nerd. Friend us on Facebook. Follow us on Instagram and Threads at Scene underscore Ed underscore Nerd. And visit our website www.sceneandnerdpodcast.com. But most importantly, rate, follow, and comment on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. Good night, geek out. You're welcome.